Now, I have not read this book, but it looks like a very interesting, captivating read. It's called The Chronicles of a Village Surgeon, right there. And we have the author of this book in studio. He's called Aru Yaru. I hope I say that right. Yeah, Aru Yaru Stanley, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mikadi. This is interesting. Before we even get into it, please tell us a bit more about yourself, Stanley. Thank you very much. Good morning to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Dr. Stanley Mwenda Ariyadu. Yes. I am a surgeon by training. I am a public speaker. I am an author. I am an a mentor and a, an award-winning uh, health manager. Okay. I currently practice as the director of medical services in St. Teresa Hospital in Meru County. Okay. Yes. Wow. That is a lot. <laughs> it is for sure. It is. <laughs> and you know, most of the times when we're in school, you know those, um, you must have been like an A student, you know, like, no? Kind of. You <laughs> can't hack to medicine without scoring A's in exactly. everything. Exactly. <laughs> so, so definitely being an A student, most of the students would be like, if you're an A student, they were just like, you know, chill. They don't speak a lot. They're always in books and reading. So you have a bit of both worlds. You speak to people, you are a public speaker, and you write. So you're in the books and you're in medicine as well. All rounded. I like it. A lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're here to talk about this book today. Is this your first book? This is my first book. Chronicles of a Village Surgeon. So yes. there's definitely bits and pieces of you in here, considering you are a surgeon. Completely. Okay. And bits and pieces of patients I have treated. In here. <laughs> yes. So is village. What, okay, please tell us about this. Village ni wapi? Meru inakani kama ni town. Nama ni uko ndani. Meru ni village. As long as you are not a city, you are a village. Anyhow. <laughs> tell us about this book. This book summarizes... 28 thematic areas mm -hmm. of my experience as a surgeon okay. in the non-metropolitan towns of Kenya. I have practiced in Nyeri and I'm currently practicing in Meru. So okay. what is picked here is those encounters, mm -hmm. but not just the diseases that the patients present with, okay. but peculiar social aspects that make the patient come to us. <laughs> to finally break it down. Yes. Okay. Let me take you back. In undergraduate training, when we were medical students in Eldoret, in third year, we had this session where we were supposed to go out to the village and carry out some research. And I remember my group and I opted not to pick medical, so to speak, questions, but picked a social aspect of it. And we asked ourselves, mm -hmm. if patients come to hospital and you have a way of assessing how you uphold their hope that they will get better, okay. does that actually contribute? And in our reading, we found it does. Yes. And what that means is you can train a surgeon, you can train a doctor, but there are certain social determinants of the disease the patient presents with mm. that if left unlooked, might actually impair the healing of the patient and impede your work as a surgeon. So through all the encounters captured in this book, yes. there is a certain aspect I've tried to bring out. And as the book cover reads, it, it, it comes across as stranger than fiction, but you will meet a patient who is willing to give consent to have a big surgery, but not give consent to have their beard shaved because that is their cultural or religious belief. And you'll have a patient who comes with severe life-threatening illness, mm -hmm. and you're doing everything, rushing, adrenaline rush to go to surgery to save their lives, but they will say, ha ha, wait a minute, I have to get back talk to my family and get that person who bewitched me to lift the witch or the cars before I can give you consent. And, and the cases and scenarios are countless. That is the angle that the Chronicles of a Village Surgeon tries to look at. So we're sort of like moving away from the traditional medicine. That is not what we're going to get here. Well, there is that as well. But we'll also be looking at the social aspects of all these patients that walk in. Absolutely. What inspired the book though? Because you used to, in school, when you were in school, you said that is the, what you, your group decided to do. You carried this along in your life even after school. Absolutely, absolutely. And when you, when, when you just open any dictionary and, start and, 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 and look for the definition of medicine, which is what I did the moment I got admission to medical school. Yes. What is medicine? And they'll say the medicine is the art and science. So what we do is glorify the science 
and forget that there's a bit there's art. of art in medicine that art comes in the way of apprenticeship. Surgery is a lot of apprenticeship besides the science, the hard facts. There's a lot of apprenticeship learning from colleagues. The other art is how you interact with patients because if I come across as someone with, who doesn't care about the patient, mm -hmm. however good I am as a doctor, that patient is not going to get better. Yeah. So that bit might be silenced once in a while, but it is vitally important. And in our initial interactions with patients, if you visited a doctor, if any of the listeners has visited a doctor, you will know a bit where we pause a little and ask you, are you married? Mm. Do you have, how many children do you have? Yeah. Where do you live? Do you have insurance? Is your mother alive? Those aspects, the social aspects tell us what is your social support like? What are your belief systems like? What, 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 what might you be not really allergic to, but religiously or culturally inclined against? Mm. There are certain relations that, for example, do not take blood. And therefore, if I forget to ask that as a surgeon, and I'm going in for a major surgery, in a patient who does not receive blood, I'm setting up myself for failure. And day in, day out, you, you find those those certain aspects screaming, those are the aspects we pick here. Having said that, yes. <laughs> having said that, yeah. there, are other, there are other issues that cut across policy, that cut across, you know, the entire social space of making medicine affordable and accessible to patients. There's, a, there, 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 there's an encounter here where a patient has their insurance approved surgery, but they are struggling to get the medicine that they're supposed to have for long after that surgery. So you wonder why would then the insurance approve surgery mm, mm. and then say we can't approve for this medicine, which we all know if you've been to medical school that if you get this surgery, you're supposed to have this medication for years. Yeah. We've, we've, we've encounters where I've operated on a patient and then they eventually found some way out and flew to out of our, out of our country to India to look for care that could be available here. And unfortunately, they did not come back alive. And you ask yourself, so what went wrong? So the book sometimes pokes questions in our social conscience and mm -hmm. leaves it to us to see what's happening and hopefully wake up and see how we can. We can, we can remedy the situation. Let's pick up some stories in this book. I'm Absolutely. so intrigued right now. Yes. Because most of the times we just look at Alinda Hospitali, Alafu, we don't understand really what happened. And you mentioned something about a beard. I think I've seen instances where somebody said that they cannot be shaved. Their head, they cannot lose their hair. And it took a lot of intervention because the doctors really needed <laughs> to shave her head. But it's their belief that they don't cut hair. For sure, it is their belief built by their cultural. I mean, you are part and parcel of the cultural system where you've grown yeah. up because that's what makes you. So if, if you belong to a religion that says, don't cut your beard, you will come and say, I can't cut my beard because you believe that that is your God. That yes. is your supernatural. That is your deity. And you cannot dare go against them irrespective of what the doctor says. Okay. Well, sometimes you'll come and tell them, well, it is also that God who gave me the knowledge to <laughs> know and advise you on what is best given your current yes. disease problem. Yeah. But you can't really force them. If, if, if you look at the page that talks about, let me see, <laughs> page 101, when page. a patient's autonomy hinders their best interest. This is a recollection uh -huh. of a senior citizen who presents with, bowel cancer okay as an emergency okay and we establish and stabilize him and establish that you need surgery okay before cancer can advance and they says i'm having none of it so they have cancer they have cancer they, do, they know they know they've been told you've taken the biopsy yes you have this the results yes and you show them yes. this is cancer luckily it is not spread mm -hmm. and therefore going forward we need to do surgery okay but you see, medicine has moved from those paternalistic area or era to the time here where we give you the information as a patient, we tell you what is the best way forward, and then we let you make the decision. decision. It is called autonomy. It's a principle in medical ethics. We cannot go against your autonomy as long as you have sound mind and okay. you are an adult. Uh -huh. This patient refused to have surgery. Mm -hmm. and I sat him down with the counseling team and said, I'm not having surgery. And I told him, 
if you do not have surgery, there's yes. a likelihood that this cancer will spread. Uh -huh. There's a likelihood that it will block your bowels. Mm -hmm. There's a likelihood you will come back to hospital in extremely sick condition, mm -hmm. too difficult to be saved. And he signed the dotted line and said, even if I come dying, don't touch me. No way. And this is not someone who is not informed. There's someone who is informed, there's someone who is a little knowledgeable. And after months of back and forth, he did come back in quite some unstable condition, but likely we were able to save him. <sighs> but you see, that is where autonomy takes us. And that is what we don't like to, maybe most of the time outside we do not know. We know the doctor knows it all. Yeah. But no, the doctor gives you the advice and then you make a choice, an informed choice. So that's, that's one story. <laughs> oh my goodness. So at least we saved a life. For I was sure. so worried for him. We, we were at first as well, but yes. that's the much we can Did do. Did you ever get to find out what changed his mind? Well, we know. <laughs> we know as doctors, we know as scientists that every bad disease, every bad diagnosis, every misfortune, if you have someone who has died, if you've lost a job, if you've had a cancer diagnosis, there are several stages of grief. One of those stages is death. Yeah. So you will begin, you will argue, you will be angry, you will be you will be in denial and eventually then you will accept. We do not know at what point acceptance will come, but yes. we have to give it. But okay. what is critical is we can't force you to have a Absolutely. treatment modality as long as you have sound mind. <sighs> That's one story what? <laughs> of the of the many of the twenty eight that I'm are sorry, there. we're giving away a book today, yes, are we? we are. We're giving away one book today? Two books. Yeah. Hey, we're giving away two books today. The Chronicles of a Village Surgeon and we'll be telling you. Do we have the question? Do you have the question? Do you have the question? We'll be telling you what the question is for you to um to walk away with a book. So you're looking for two winners. Triple one, triple four, triple one. That is where you need to camp. We'll be sampling your text messages in a bit. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mikali. We still have uh, our Daktari Sajjan, author of the book, The Chronicles of the Village Sajjan. Interesting book. Let me just read a bit of the back of the book. It says, life is, a stra is stranger than fiction. That may be your conclusion after reading these encounters. Even after listening <laughs> to what he's sharing this morning, strangers they are, none of them is a fictional. So these are real stories real experiences when did this book come out when did you publish it thank you Mikali. this book came up in may it it went to press on the 12th of may uh -huh. of this year so it's 12th just of a may month. this year so it's just oh, a month okay yes okay the press. okay i just picked a random page here yes. you have such fascinating stories yes. and the reason i picked it is just the first line because you say i lost a patient to complications from cancer surgery. That is when people are entitled to eat. When yeah, while some well some feel entitled to eat, yes. others wish they could just swallow. Yes, yes. So just the fact that you lost a patient and you write it down, what do you mean like they died? Yes, for sure. Oh my god. I don't know how you deal with that to even get to a point where you have to you can share that story with us on, on in your book. Losing a patient is difficult. We have a mantra in medicine that every time a patient dies, a little of the doctor's soul dies with that patient. No. So it's, it's not an easy experience. Yeah. But every time you dust yourself up, you share with a colleague, you get up and you move on to save the, le the next life. Okay. And uh, what's important in our practice and profession, especially in terms of regulation, is to audit that death and find out if there's something that could, be, could have been done to save that life, or if nothing could have been done. Because for sure there are people who are elderly, the only place they can die is in the hospital. There are people who have had been involved in massive accidents, you couldn't save them. But every so often it's important to pause and ask, how did it go? Did we do the best as an institution? Did I do the best as a, as a, as a healthcare provider? And what can I learn from this loss of life? to prevent the next one. So that's what really 
matters at most of the time because yeah. otherwise you can easily beat yourself up beat yourself up and then you have an empty cup and you can't pour from an empty cup that is so yes. true so this story what happened now the, the the reason why i contrast this story while some feel entitled to eat others which they could just swallow mm -hmm. this patient was referred in when i worked in uh, on the slopes of mount kenya yes. from a, a, a father a, a facility father of he had cancer surgery and in developed complications complications such that the bowel could not function normally and we had to stop feeding him through the normal route which is through the mouth and take care of the infection take care of the breakage that had happened in the bowel mm -hmm. s before he could feed again unfortunately unfortunately we were not able to save him we lost him because of that complication now while this was happening something happened in the media uh, you know in the in the airwaves you might remember there was another patient who had stayed hungry for some hours because the colleague was supposed to do a procedure and gotten tied down in theater handling an emergency and therefore they were late and that patient was so so angry they sued the doctor. I think they sued the doctor because the doctor kept them angry waiting for the procedure. Now the plan usually is if you're going for certain procedures where yes. you will be maybe sedated a little or put under anesthesia, we tell you don't feed for at least a minimum of six hours so that your stomach is empty just in case you retch or vomit, you don't, you don't choke on your vomit because that's very dangerous. And that was the the guiding principle but then the doctor colleague and got in booked down because of another emergency and then the, the patient went and said i am entitled to it it is my constitutional right and when you post back as a healthcare provider and look at this other person yeah. who could just beg doctor can i just swallow some water and i'm like we really want to contain the much you can take and even shut down the intestines at, at least until they can heal and that, that, that throws the spanner in the works. It's the, it's the same, you know, it's the same philosophical argument of someone complaining because they don't have the latest designer shoes and wa then walking and finding someone who is actually walking bare feet. Mm. Every day you have someone with a challenge. Every day you take something for granted yeah. until you meet someone who wishes they, that they are just a hundredth of what you have. Absolutely. And that is the essence of this encounter, to contrast that, to mm. contrast that. Okay, so that yes. also comes out in here where you, you, you tell a tragic story on one end and there's another story of maybe hope or a story of like, you know, you could actually learn from what happened on this other one. And these stories that you share in here with us, they also have lessons absolutely for the readers as well absolutely. so even the way you've written them some of the pages the peruse too we can do we can do it's very interesting yes. it's a very interesting read it's just yes. you feel like you said it's it feels it would be fictional but then it's not you're <laughs> it constantly is. reminded that it is not how long did it take for you to compile all of this for us <sighs> thank you thank you Mikaeli. first i wanted to say that Three things that I like about this book quickly yes. are one, it is not fiction. It and is sometimes not. you look at it and wonder, is this true? Is this it real is life? True. Every case is a true case, not told, handled by myself. That is number one. Number two is that we've tried as much as possible to do two things, mm -hmm. to make it palatable to the lay person who is not a medical professional. And secondly, to infuse humor because surgery is high stress, high drama, blood, sweat and tears, pain, everything, people losing life and all that. So there's always an aspect to bring the humorous side, yeah. the, 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 that there's always something to laugh about after we've grieved for some hours so that we can get energy for the next patient. And of course, the final bit, this is local talent, local local content. Yeah. Local talent, local content. So it's, we don't have to listen to f stories from elsewhere. We can look at stories that are local. How long did it take to write, yes. to write this book? The moment I decided I am compiling them, it, it took me, maybe this decision was made towards the end of last year. Ah. But by the time <laughs> this decision was done, yes. I had a compilation of so many stories. So initially I would do, I am also a health commentator in our dailies. You'll find my articles on most of the dailies. 
Sometimes I would send them to the daily, sometimes they would be rejected, then I would put them on my blog at yeah. aruyaru.com uh -huh. and share them through my you know, social media, Dr. Stanley Aruyaru on Facebook, at Arumwest on Twitter, whichever. And I, every time I had all these collections, I, I piled them and whatever was remaining was just a, a couple more as I encountered them. So the, the, the collection of the stories did back mm, almost four years back, wow. but deciding you know let me make them into a book for yeah. that person who does not want to scourge through the website and read blog after blog and these others that have come up with them let me compile them into a book this this came actually courtesy of my wife who challenged me why don't you put them into a book yes. and the rest as they say is it's this history, history. <laughs> is this history <laughs> so then my question to you this morning yes because Dr. has decided vitabu really when was this book put out on circulation? I think he answered that earlier. When was it? It was very precise. The month, the year. Did you keep the date? I did the date. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can forgive the date. <laughs> so we can forgive the date if you didn't get it. But he mentioned the month and the year. And for you to get this book, just go on to our SMS. SMS line triple one triple four triple one. That is uh, that's gonna cost you just a shilling. Send that in. Remember, the more you text, the more your chances of actually getting this book. So we would not be able to see anything else apart from your texts. Social media, Switch TV KE on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. What's the strangest encounter that you've put in this book for us? It could be strange for you, but if I read it, then I'll find something else strange for me because we are from very different cultures. And we believe in very different things. So for you, which one was it? Goodness me, this, <laughs> this, this is difficult. I keep saying when I'm asked this question, pick the best, I tell them. Not even the best, like uh, the one that is like, where, 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 where? So that's Jawiski, Ivy Tena. Yes, <laughs> my goodness. So the strangest, let me, let me read it for you. When a surgeon's trade is challenged by a mysterious protege. Is that the one? Um, well, we are still we're still looking. That's the one. When a surgeon's trade is challenged by a mysterious protege, page eighty-five. Page eighty-five. Let me get. Let me take that is there. strange. That was stranger than fiction to myself. Oh wait. <laughs> so okay, okay, I see. Yes. When a surgeon's trade is challenged by a mysterious prodigy. Yes. Okay, what happened in here? So I had gone out, <laughs> this time I used to, you know, go to my sub county hospital and offer some charity clinic on a Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning, yes. every once a month before Corona came. We used to call it BC. And there's this chap who is brought in, two patients are brought in. Okay. One of them has complications from circumcision, so young boy, mm -hmm. maybe early teens, has problems from complications from circumcision, some infection is coming in. The clinical officer asks me, Doc, come through the next door. I want you to say something. And as I go there, the next person who has walked into my consultant room has a similar problem. Oh, okay. And I start wondering, is this a mirror image? This person is on the other side, same age group, same yes. everything, same yes. problem. The other side, same everything, same problem. So I ask them, what happened? And we learn that this person has been circumcised by an amateur. Okay, who is the amateur? The amateur is a boy in the village. A boy. A boy. Isn't it supposed to be like a huge rite of passage where they have proper... Stranger than fiction. Okay. Stranger cool. than fiction. Okay. So, how has this been go going on? So we hear that this boy, for some odd reason, from wherever, he has gathered some skill. And he has circumcised other boys in the village. And this is the second season. You know, usually circumcision yes. goes in uh, the holiday yes. season. Yes. And this is the second season. And he has realized that, look, I am promoting these guys. I'm behaving like a tour guide, setting them where I've not been. Now, let me, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm behaving like a travel agent, setting them where I've not been. So let me go there. And he decides to circumcise himself. So now here they are. Wait. <laughs> uh, one among the two has circumcised himself. Yes. The other one was circumcised by the other one. Yes. The other boy in the village. Yes. Okay. The boy in the village circumcised people one season. Yes. He kind of is He kind of is okay. Second season he decided, 
I am not going to be sending you I have not been. Let me Circums also go. Yes. So he circumcises a number, then he circumcises himself. And now they are here with one of his patients <laughs> in the other room, and he is in this room, and he's not opening up. Okay. So I go to the next room and ask, what's happening? What happened? And here the story had been circumcised. I ask, uh -huh. who did that? That's when I learn it is my patient in the next room, but my patient has not opened up. And this is the moment I wondered, this person has not even finished primary school, oh not God. even secondary school, not even medical college, not even surgical training. Yes. I mean, to be a surgeon is a whole list of endless years. Yes. He has not used a suture. <laughs> he has not used... What is that? A, a suture, you know, is a material we use to stitch up okay. so that people do not bleed. And the, 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 the job looks decent, so I ask him. Oh. Might I ask some... <laughs> Might I ask you for some skill <laughs> or something like that? Oh and, my and, God. and it goes mute. So I admit them into the ward and advise the colleagues who are there on what to do. And I went back to my station. Uh, down the week, they called me and told me, oh, your patients are doing well. I told them, discharge them. So I, I never found him. And I look forward to meeting him in future to find where he got this natural talent. <laughs> so that's straight <laughs> like that. Where? I tell yes. you, when you look I mean, teach who, me your who, who doesn't want to to learn one or two in their line of duty? I but mean. then that also goes to show you the society that we live in. So as the, as we learn from your life, you're also looking at our society. And for this sure. boy has been doing this for a while, for for many boys, and then he decided to do it to himself. Yes, that is strange. I wish I could track him. I, I'm sure you'd want to host him on a TV yeah, That show. would be interesting. <laughs> I just feel like, aha. Uh -huh. And then, <laughs> have you ever encountered, um, you know, probably patients who've gone through gender-based violence? Yes, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. And there are three or so cases here. Oh, in your book? In the book. Great. One uh -huh. of them is the one you had just mentioned to me during the commercial break. Yes. Of this child who was going through the ravages of, I think, separation with the parents, mm -hmm. separation of his parents, and it, he was just a little boy, but he, he actually attempted suicide, and I met him because he had so many burn wounds and trying to set himself ablaze. That is one case. The second case is where we, we talk about a piece of land that cost an arm and a leg. And there I narrate the case of a patient who came badly mutilated by father, sister, and brother fighting over a piece of land. And finally, towards the last last chapter, there's a nice, interesting story of blood for, vi for Valentine's. Valentine's that? Day in blood and tears. And this is another case of love gone sour, of a gentleman who approached a lady and you know, wanted to start up a relationship. The, the lady was a divorcee. And the gentleman, I, I think, was also in an estranged relationship from his previous marriage. And, you know, they tried it and it didn't work. But the guy persisted, persisted, persisted. He, he almost wanted this lady by force. And then on Valentine's Day, which if you remember, was it last year or this year, he fell on a Sunday. And the lady is coming from Sunday, but this gentleman is in a drinking den in a strategic place, waiting for her. And he runs after her and he attacks her. And why not for the other colleagues and neighbors who are around to save her? We don't know what would have happened. So th th there are those angles as well of gender-based violence and domestic violence that litter this. Because at the end of the day, there is, th 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 there is a cost that lands on the surgeon, repairing the defect, stabilizing the broken bones, you know repairing the star booths and all that it is it is it is it is actually i dare say this book is littered with stories and stories of gender based violence mm. and other aspects because you know i'm just essential. looking at what this book started off as as a young student in university who decided to look at things differently and did not ignore the art that is in medicine and the social aspect of it and that we get to learn from that. We get to get stories that are real. Real stories, they sound like fiction. I think that is the most interesting thing about this. Yes, for sure. 
oh my god how much does it go for where can we get it yeah <laughs> Thank you, Mikali. This book goes for 1,500 Kenya shillings. Yeah, it it's be like available. 2,500. Oh, I, mean. <laughs> I, I, I allow extra. <laughs> I allow extra. You can tell me to keep it. Oh Anyhow, God, it's, yeah. a, it's available on Rough Books. Mm -hmm. Rough Books, just uh, log on to their, it's an online store, roughbooks.com, mm -hmm. and just type there. It's among the latest fast moving so it will be among the top on the shelf or just type there the chronicles of a village surgeon and it will pop up and yeah. they will deliver to your location if you're within cbd it will have no extra delivery charge okay depending on how far you are from cbd it will have a little rider cost those who want the e-version there's a kiddle version going for 9.99 say ten dollars okay. on amazon again go on amazon.com type there the chronicles of a village surgeon or even if you type village surgeon among the two hits you'll get is the chronicles of a village surgeon and you can get it there are we expecting to get another book for sure for sure what will that be about oh you've already set the bar too high <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you, will, you, you will do for your next one you, you what's the plan you remember the one I, I i shared with you at the break page 61 page 61 yes lessons from the appendix yes surgery is interesting it's like military science it's like a certain ritual and as you go through surgery as a career you learn certain principles you learn certain habits you learn learn certain idiosyncrasies and you can transfer these to either other aspects of professional life or other aspects of normal personal life okay. and this is a prime at what you might want to expect what my thoughts are on the next book or, or, or those to share is what are the life lessons that we can learn from the day-to-day -day life of a surgeon the principles we use in surgery that we can apply in life look for example at the lesson from the appendix on page 61 mm -hmm. not everything that endangers your life is important to you That's and true. here i share the story of a patient who was in in, in, in critical condition because their appendix had gotten inflamed now, if you ask any surgeon or any anatomist or any scientist, appendix, like the name suggests, is not important. It should be Uko among Musho. the appendix. Uko yes. Musho. It's not yeah. even main content. Yeah. It, it's, it's only a certain function in childhood and then it becomes a vestigial organ. It's there. It doesn't serve function. The same is another organ called gallbladder. And we can mm. mention a few others. Okay. But let them get infected they will put your life at danger. The lesson and wisdom here is not everything that can put your life in danger. It's actually vital to in you. Body, because okay. when you come with the deceased appendix or gold bladder, we remove it. Yes. And you go and you live a healthy life without, without these it. small organs. Okay. So that, that kind of thinking is what is will what be will the be next seeing. book. And Social I look media forward. Handles. For sure, social media handles. LinkedIn, Dr. Stanley Ariyaru. Instagram, Stanley underscore Ariyaru. Facebook, Stanley Aruyaru and Instagram at Arumuesta. That is at Arumuesta. Feel free to engage. And if you're in Meru, feel free to walk in Kero <laughs> Hospital and we can talk. Asante Sana. Thank you so much. We'll be announcing the winners after the break, so don't go too far. This is Full Circle with Mikali.